Okay, so we're catching up with Anna, who is just early stages of a Yamaha clarinet repad. So Anna, maybe I'm just going to show with the camera the condition of the pads that were. So these are the old pads still in the keys, is that yes, correct? So yes. let's have a look and explain maybe why it's a good time to get them changed. Thank okay, you. so ideally when they're new, they are white and clean and no creases on the pads. These are very good examples of when a repad is needed. Um, they are tarnished, which can be part of just the wood, the stained wood, uh, but also um, these creases are very deep. Also, the skin is coming off. Well, this is after polishing. But uh, and it's like things like this C sharp, G sharp. That's a common yeah. one, isn't it? Because it's vented shut, it that's tends it. to pick up a lot of moisture, doesn't it? And so, that's it. yeah. Also, what happened a lot with these situations, the the moist not only in the pad but goes also to the screws, and the screws get uh, rusted, rusted. So I also need to polish very well the the threads. Yeah. Uh, this is a. On the screws. Can you see here? Yeah. You still see some remains of the rust. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. Well, we'll come back a little bit later this afternoon and hopefully you'll be getting some new pads on and you can show us the difference between these old ones and the nice mm -hmm. shiny new ones. Okay, okay so Anna, where, whereabouts are we up to now then? Okay, I polished the key work already, removed the old corks, the old pads and uh, ready to put the new ones. Uh, the way I chose the new pads are with the, like they have a shoulder, so ideally I like them to sit like this, so the shoulder comes off uh, the cup. So it should be fairly snug, but mm. not forced in, but not that's so it. loose that it can just drop out. That's, that's, that's it. about right, isn't it? Yes. The only the situation that I like them snug are on the cork pads usually used on the speaker key uh, and sometimes on some models on the side uh, E flat, B flat and the C sharp, uh, G sharp. Yes, they sometimes use a cork on those. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so it's worth mentioning that different manufacturers keys need different size pads so that's why we fit individually based on the instrument that's that it. we're using at the time so what about just a quick tip on getting the pads in and or maybe show us how you would put a pad mm -hmm. in at this point i'll move the camera from the flame <laughs> so what i do first is melt the shellac and the shellac put... is like a sticking agent isn't it mm -hmm. and drop a bit on the pad and then drop a bit on the back on the cup and while I'll do this a second stage so when I put the pad it glues in and then I just like to give a twist to make sure and it's securely in um, place. Um, why do we use the shellac perhaps as opposed to a cement or a, a glue perhaps? Because it's, it's, it's more malleable, isn't it, sometimes when you heat it? It is. I find that uh, among all the other glues that we use, this is one that is easy to work um, because the, the timing for uh, to move the pads if necessary, yeah. uh, it's just right. Yeah. While, for example, the glue gun glue takes longer to settle yeah. Well, maybe what we'll do, we'll let you get these in and then I think it's worth coming back and looking at when you get a pad on and how you need to adjust it because it's not just a case of sticking them in, putting it all back on the clarinet and hey presto, mm, that's everything's it. working, you wish. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll come back when you're doing some pad seating and maybe we can walk through that as well. Okay? Thank you. Okay, Anna, so we're back and I can see you've got a few keys on the top joint now mm -hmm. and those pads are all seated as you go. So just explain maybe or walk us through the actual process of what we call seating a pad. So that's just making sure that the pad covers the hole all the way around. So you're heating that's the it. cup to start with? Yes. So um, as you saw before, I was putting, I was um, gluing the pads on the cups. Now it's actually 
the difficult process of resetting the pads over the tone holes and to do that need to apply the heat uh, in the back of the cup and um, fill with a very thin paper so you're going all the way around the pad just making sure if if that paper is grabbing it means it's tight and and then if there's a little light spot and that light spot of the paper would be the equivalent of air coming mm. out wouldn't it if you were, that's if you were playing it. yeah that's what we'd call a leak yep so it's just heat and that allows you a little bit of time to move it using that pad tool which that's we've it. just got that's why there. we find shellac it's the perfect one uh, because the time to work it's uh, very good comparing for example with the glue gun glue yeah. it takes longer for all these movements to happen and then as as it cools it sets and and stays in place and then hmm. hopefully well not hopefully <laughs> hmm. the movement you've made and so if you imagine that on every single key on the clarinet that's how a clarinet can play easier or harder you know if it's 100 percent airtight it's going to play a lot better so hmm. usually at the end anna as well when you've got everything back on and you've you've given it a quick test would you just have a quick run through everything just to make sure in case anything's moved a little um actually uh i do that while on each individual pad so i'm pretty confident after so every every pad i sit and then um it stays seated yeah yeah because also after sitting each pad there's a time for it to settle and um uh, cold, cool yeah, cool down, down. Cool yeah. down. yeah. Um, so the other thing, just worth mentioning, maybe on that G sharp A bridge, you've got the screw there, haven't you? So mm. we should perhaps mention that when, yeah, when so you get that back on. When when sitting this key, it's important that the screw is backed up because if it's all the way down, it gives the wrong seating impression that's it because it might hold um, as you can see now there's no movement mm -hmm. and that can cause a bad reading when sitting the pad okay so it's yeah. important to back that off yeah. cool okay well we'll leave you with it keep going okay so we're back with Anna and wow we've got a clarinet all the keys are on it's always a good start isn't it <laughs> So tell us now, what, when you've got everything back on, you've done all that pad seating, what would be the next step? And, you know, in terms of the testing, what sort of thing you're looking for when you test? Because it's, it's a test to ensure the work, really, isn't it? It is. Also, when putting these two joints together is important, for example, for this key uh, and this key to, do, to regulate it properly. So when pressing this key, this should close at the same rate. Okay, yeah. and also this shows uh, the vent, so the vent is the opening between the, the key and the tone hole. So this adjustment is important to put the right size of cork uh, yeah. here, okay? So it's all those little things with your experience when you're playing, you're feeling for any stuffy notes or any things that need a slight adjustment, so you might open up the venting a bit more, change That's the it. cork, etc. Okay. So I can see you're just doing some alternate or you know, alternate fingerings of the same note there as well. So when you're doing that and you're testing, mm -hmm. it's more just checking that the colour of the note and maybe the intonation within the realms of what the That's clarinet it. normally does. And also the vent, because the vent then showed the intonation. Yeah. So find that within the range of the instrument, if it's the best I can do, actually. Uh, now, actually, with this test, I found that there's this sound here, which I'm not happy about. So I need to investigate what is wrong there. Okay. Okay, we'll leave you to make those final adjustments, but otherwise it's job done.